everybody. Welcome to Glen Ness Cow Emporium Fencing Edition. We are up in the beautiful today, back in the summer pasture. In fact, we are up right near where we saw the second bear's den. And we are going to be putting up today some high tensile barbed wire on the on our side of this fence, you can see the fence is a smooth wire fence. And so we're going to be putting two layers of this high tensile barbed wire. Um, this stuff is nasty pokey uh, up. And yeah, so that's our job for today. How much fence is there to do this to, Glenn? If we did it all the way to the other corner? Half a mile. Okay. So, this fancy contraption here is just a plate. Uh, the bottom of it is square. It's got a thing in the middle so that the barbed wire just sits on there. And uh, where we can, we just use the truck. We drive along and it uh, rolls out the wire so we don't have to hand bomb it. Those things are not that heavy. They're about 30 pounds. Glenn's using some uh, fencing stretchers here to tighten the wire because the the spool will keep spinning and so uh, we need to do this in order to tighten the wire. We're going to put some fencing staples in here and uh, secure it so that we can move on. Just looking at that second bear's den that we've seen, um, it doesn't really appear like the grass has been super trampled down around the outside of it. So I'm not sure there's a ton of action there right now. Glenn was up yesterday and found a bunch of this broken smooth wire. That's why we're uh, up here today fixing fence. And he did see a grizzly at the top of the hill where the cows are way back there. So he was up here by himself because I couldn't make it yesterday and he didn't go explore up there. So today we had a small rain event last night which is wonderful so it just means that we are able to uh, come back today and drive in here feeling pretty confident that the fire danger is super low. That has got to be one of the nastiest sounds. Don't you wish you were here today, hanging out with that screechy screech. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we gotta, <laughs> we gotta work around the bushes. I'm gonna help Glenn here. You're doing a good job, Glenn. <laughs> Moral support. He said he missed me yesterday, which is really sweet. He said, Maybe I shouldn't tell tales, but he said when he was up here, he thought of me because when I'm up here, I see the beautiful and often he just sees the work. So he said he thought of me so that he could take a second to appreciate the beautiful. Yeah. Oh, just a, measuring stick. a measuring stick. So for a four strand fence, that's how we do the ones down at the newer place. But Basically, it's going to go between these two smooth wires here, and then we'll put another one down here. So we'll have lots of wire and something that's pokey in case there's no power, because that seems to be a thing. When you have smooth wire and you have cattle, they have no respect for the smooth wire, so there's be power on it. there has to be power. Thank you. 
to tighten it from the bottom of the post here so I don't pull the post over. I just want to show you something with these fencing staples. You see how they're shaped like a U? So they go over the wire. And then you can see on here, there's these little uh, barbs on them. So when they go into the post, they don't pull back out nearly as easy. They do pull out, of course, but that stops them from moving around. So that's a Glenn said that's a hard staple, so it's right into the fence. Yeah, Normally simple. we like wouldn't boring. necessarily do that. I'll try to find an example of um, where we would not hard staple it. Okay, so as opposed to a tight stapling, this is more like a soft staple. You see how the wire can move around in there? So Glenn uh, tight stapled the wire to the big corner post down there where we first started but ideally you want your wire to kind of move back and forth along the fence um yeah so that's a soft staple that's what we're doing for most of the fence and you can see that he just uh pulled it with the fence stretchers so so we're going to pound that one in tight to keep the fence tight down the row and we'll just keep on moving down with our stretcher every so often. So this one's going to get this put in tight. This one's going to be put in tight just because just we because don't want it to go loose when we take the stretcher off. Part way. Okay. Yeah, so we just keep stretching it on the way down. Awesome. Do it. All right. So we're just going to wire this up so that if, uh, if by some chance the hot wire happens to tangle up in the barbed here, it doesn't short the whole fence out. That just means making sure this isn't touching any wires that are going to the ground or any steel posts that's insulated from them. Just don't plan on it being hot, but in case it is, it doesn't kill the whole fence. The fence does touch it, it's just a little more draw and it'll be another hot wire, but it doesn't kill the whole fence right from one end to the other, so. Oh, look who's coming to see us. They're all filing down off the hill up there. Oh, and we got some coming from the other direction. We're not moving yet, girls. Back over yonder, you got lots of grass to eat. Well, we're back here fencing. I just wanted to show you a couple things. It's an old car. Bit of a fixer-upper. Raspberry bushes growing up in it. And not too far from it here, it's an old set of drills. I just want to show you. Good time to show you because the cows have been hanging out here and eating the grass right down. The old set of drills. What's left of it? Back in the 30s, tell I'm not sure when. Maybe Glenn can look it up and I can add it. Um, there was a family living back here. Well, 
Glenn's great grandparents owned the land at that time, different family back here, who worked for the neighbors across the fence. And so, but at that time, all this land here you see was broke. It was into crop, and I think Glenn said it was oats. And up on top of the hill up there, they used to hay that. So, yeah. It's hard to imagine how things have changed over the years, but anyway, I just thought that was cool, so I thought I'd show you while I was up here. Here's more evidence of uh, people living back here. This is a lilac bush. It tells a story of days gone by. So we don't want to tighten these too much because if we do, it just pulls the posts out of the ground in the, in the bottom when we tighten them up. So we just want to give it a little bit. And you can put these on anywhere along the fence. having to cut the wire. There's probably a tool for this that I don't have. But... It's probably tight enough for now. And then you just put the pin in. work really good until the pin gets bent and they don't work very good at all but a couple of fencing staples will go in the hole and save your bacon if you're a mile from the truck. This one doesn't need much. So we're doing these within sight of the low spot because if we happen to over tighten or need to put something in the low spot, we can loosen these off and fix it. If you do it when it's a half mile away, you don't know what's happening. You gotta walk every time you're fixing the low spot. That orange thing is a switch so that you can just shut the power off. Say we wanted to work on that side of the fence and didn't want to die, we just switched the power off here. And the you can see the fence line, the metal T posts are down the bottom. And then we fenced around this because this little valley here is where water runs down in here into this uh, slough. And so the posts in the bottom practically float most years. So that's why we went around it like this. It's not a strong fence. That's why we have three strands of barbed wire on there. I like to reach through onto the neighbors if it's too close to the water and you can't keep them on your place. Yeah, so the, in this area where the cows are right now, back here, uh, they don't access this water. So they have to walk over the hill to a different water, which isn't really that far. Yeah, they don't want to because they see the water and they're tempted by it. So they reach through the fence and then cause the fence to go down and not good. So that's why we have power on the main fence and then we fenced around this area here. Fencing, fencing everywhere. So that's a kink in the wire. If we try and straighten this out, it'll just end up breaking right here. So we're going to put a couple of crimpers on there to, to cut this out and splice it because that'll just break. If it doesn't break when we straighten it, it'll break when we don't want it to in a year or something. So we'll fix it. Okay. 